My father was a lighthouse keeper. My mother was a queen. But life is a way of bringing people together. He could unite our worlds one day. Check it out. Arthur is talking to the fish. Brother King Orm is about to declare war upon the surface world. The only way to stop this war is for you to take your rightful place as king. Trust me, I am no king. You do your best thinking when you're not thinking at all. That was the worst pet talk ever. You might want to strap in. You have two different worlds. That is exactly why you are worthy. That was awesome. The war is coming to the surface. And I'm bringing the wrath of the seven seas with me. We're here. What are you doing? Wait, wait, wait. We have Jason Momoa finally getting to be the star of Aquaman. And uh, this one's kind of interesting because Aquaman in this film, like, I know that I've talked to you beforehand, I love his design because his design feels to me like a 90s era Aquaman, and I don't care about Silver Age Aquaman design at all. But I'll go ahead and say this, looking at this trailer, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the characters and stuff like that. The good news about them apparently following Jeff Johns' take on Aquaman is it looks like we've got a combination of the Aquaman elements that worked in the 90s, plus the Aquaman elements from the Silver Age that Jeff Johns managed to kind of combine into one grand mythological arc. So uh, what was your first takeaway from this trailer? Um, I'm glad it was as fun to watch as it was. I think that Jason Momoa is a movie star we're actually going to finally be reckoning with because this is going to get him a lot of jobs that, okay, some that we will question, some that we will love. But boy, this is his role. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, like I think we talked one time about how I don't really like the uh, New 52 Aquaman that much. For a while, because I feel like it's too—it's trying too hard to make the Silver Age look cool. But I think, see, I did. Yeah, but... you, you liked it, like. But I think the thing about this movie is because they go ahead and introduce him looking like the '90s Aquaman, and because I think they're going to mostly avoid having to reconstruct all the Silver Age stuff and just say, "Come on, you know it's awesome. You don't need to have it explained to you." He commands sharks. What's not awesome about that? Like, I like that. It feels more natural because it does definitely feel like a jeff john style aquaman i think we can both agree there in terms of what the setup looks like but it's you know a jeff john's aquaman who doesn't feel like he has to kind of back up the whole you know i'm awesome and not weird because it's jason momoa i mean you see that guy walking down the street you're pretty much already thinking okay that guy looks cool i want to look like that guy but i can't i mean dang the guy looks like conan the barbarian because he was but you know it's, like, he's naturally charismatic, and I think he fits this role really well, in part because you can tell he himself loves the ocean and loves the water. Like, you know, he's got the tattoos, they expanded for the character. And I really love the idea of him being this kind of, you know, charismatic outsider 
who does inhabit two worlds. And I think in this trailer, you can see him having that already expressed. Because you see him on land, and you see him in the sea, and you can tell, yeah, he doesn't quite belong in either, but there's a bit of him in both. And I really feel that comes through in Momoa's performance here in this trailer a lot. Where you can tell he's like, yeah, 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 it's Atlantis, it's part of my homeland, and yeah, 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 so is the surface world. But listen, my dad was a lighthouse keeper, saw a hot chick on the beach who was a queen, they fell in love, they had me. I like both places. They're both cool, and they could both occasionally use, to quote him in this trailer, an ass whooping. I think that this trailer really is melding a lot of worlds. Um, I feel like one of the things they're doing is playing off of who was obviously the most... Eh, okay, I'll preface this. I think that the most popular character that came out of Justice League was Aquaman. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, let's face people, it. You, you people hear did him. like Flash. Yeah, but you heard people. You heard him say, like, woo, and write a parademon down, and you're like, that guy's fun. I like him. I want to see more of him. Right. So this is not an indictment of anybody else that was in the movie, but Aquaman just felt right. And you know what I felt about watching the Aquaman trailer? What? I felt like I was watching the Iron Man trailer. I can get that. For the very first time. There's... I felt like we were getting something that was fresh, something original. Even though we had seen it before, I guess twice technically... But it felt like we were getting the right person for the right job in the right superhero franchise. Yeah. Like, I keep... It was talking. special. It was, it was great, too, because an underwater movie with someone who rides seahorses or can control sharks or orcas or whatever... Man, did you ever expect it to, like, make so much sense? Like, it was just going to... This is Aquaman. Uh, kind of, yeah. Like, there, I kept on telling there you. There we were. Yeah, I didn't need him reconstructed after the 90s. Like, I was I was raised on Justice League Aquaman, who's a man's man, who doesn't take no crap from nobody, you know, cut his own hand off to save his kid, is, you know, a guy of intelligence and wisdom, but also, you know, kind of relaxed and a little chill if he needs to. I was already into that. And honestly, uh... If, we, if you don't mind me going ahead and bringing up something else here, I really like how they've kind of contrasted Jason Momoa's, you know, kind of laid-back but authoritative cool with Patrick Wilson as Orm, you know, Ocean Master, his brother. Like, the real treat for me in this thing, besides Jason Momoa, because he is awesome, is seeing Patrick Wilson as Orm, because he's another kind of actor I think kind of got saddled with the, well, he's handsome, so he should be like the hero or the romantic lead. And I honestly think he was always a bit better at playing a darker character or a more sardonic character, like in Fargo, you know, where he gets to be a little bit more... That makes sense. Yeah, where he gets to be a little bit more dignified in a way that can kind of be a little bit off-putting if you're, you know, expecting people to, like, you know, move towards you a little bit. And I love the way he sounds as Orm, and I'm really hoping they go with the kind of complex, morally ambiguous version I don't want to see them pull off a thing where in like that Justice League Atlantis video from a few years ago where they had him kill his mother. I don't want to see that. I honestly want to see Patrick Wilson play an Orm who was the good son to his father and a decent son to his mother and is a quote-unquote good Atlantean, but he's, you know, a warmonger who wants to avenge the pollution of the oceans upon the surface world. Like, I want it to be as simple as that. That for an Atlantean... He may be a totally fine person, but because you're not in Atlantean, he thinks you need to pay up, so he's going to attack you with the Wrath of the Seven Seas. And I really like how, you know, they have him apparently, I hope, like, again, it's the trailer we're talking about here. It can be totally different when we actually watch it. It looks like Arthur shows up following Mira's advice to, you know, challenge for the throne, and it kind of looks like Orm, even though he clearly doesn't want this to happen, accepts and actually, like, honors his challenge. Like, I like the implications of that. Like, you know, Orm's the little brother, and I kind of like the idea of him being kind of a dignified, noble aristocrat 
who contrasts with Jason Momoa's more, you know, charismatic barbarian look. And I really like the idea of those two bouncing off each other. Like, they even just have that scene where they're, like, walking around each other underwater, and you see, like, uh, you know, them both with their tridents and their armor before they fight. And you see Wilson kind of just, like, uh, twirl his trident a little bit. And it's a nice touch because it makes you think, okay, yeah, this guy is the goody little two-shoes, clean-shaven, you know, short haircut, you know, nobleman from Atlantis. But his body language in that scene feels like, okay, you can tell that he and Aquaman are brothers. I really look forward to that fight because I want the more nuanced rivalry between them. Because if we need an outright bad guy, <laughs> Aquaman has an outright bad guy. Don't you worry about that. That's Black Manta. But if you need someone to be a little bit more of the guy who can talk to Aquaman, who can have a philosophical debate with him, you've got Orm. And in a way, I kind of want to point this out, Orm's kind of like a reverse Killmonger. Do you see what I'm saying? Kind of? Well, think about this. Killmonger and Black Panther is an outsider member of the royal family who shows up to challenge the rightful king for his throne. Orm is already the apparently anointed leader of Atlantis, already has the power and has the aristocratic bearing that you'd see in like T'Challa in the first part of Black Panther, but he's the antagonist. So he's being challenged by the outsider family member, in this case, Arthur, and it, you know, he's kind of got the same advantages as a Killmonger, and then he's a charismatic character who's got some reasons to be angry and to get back at people, and who, you know, is, you know, using the rules of lineage to do so. But as a reverse, he's, you know, the guy who's in the seat. He's the guy who's already got the suit. He's the guy who's accepted. He's the insider. It's a neat twist on the idea, and I kind of like the idea of making it so that Aquaman's kind of the outsider who has to overthrow the, you know, patriarchy at this point in time to take over himself and kind of fix things. And I like the implication that Orm probably does have at least enough decency to face his brother in open, even combat and possibly not kill him because they're brothers. Mm. Possibly. That's, that's what I mean. I kind of like the more controlled version you see in Aquaman in the comics where Orm's a little bit more ambiguous. I don't want him to be an outright bad guy. Longer talk for later. <laughs> um, well, since we're talking about controversial stuff, uh, let's talk about the Titans trailer. Uh, you do not want to talk about Black Manta a little bit there? Um, he looked great. I don't know what there else is to say. I mean, like, he had two scenes. Well, here's, like, I was talking about with the thing with... Helmet like, off and then blasting a tower, so... Yeah, well, here's my main reason for liking having both Black Manta and Orm in this production. I want to have Black Manta be a no-nonsense nemesis. I want him to be the bad guy who's in a feud with Aquaman who doesn't need to exchange monologues with him and will just attack him. And I think that having Orm there gives you the guy who you can have the dialogue and the relationship and the monologuing with, and then you can just have, you know, Aquaman probably avenge what he thinks is his dad's death by killing Black Manta's father, Black Manta gets angry, and you get Black Manta as a good, no-nonsense, no-frills, arch-enemy. That's what I'm looking forward to there. I look forward to that, too. I just... Okay. If we look forward to just the Aquaman movie as what we're going to get, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be weird as hell, right? Oh, yeah. They have to establish an entire underwater civilization with seven seas and apparently seven kingdoms and seven tridents because like they show a scene there where there are seven statues behind orm with all their own tridents and apparently like jamin hansu is playing one sub king there's going to be some other sub kings who arthur's going to have to go to and <laughs> he's also you know well he's got to unite the seven kingdoms eh 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 Love yeah he does <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be so, fun. Yeah. Um, but I think that we should go ahead and segue that into the weirdest trailer. Thanks for listening to our YouTube video here. If you like what you heard, feel free to go on to Apple iTunes Podcast and search for Franchise Wars or on a Tumblr for the same thing.